Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Meet the New Google Sites. Uh, my name is Lisa Thuman. I'm the Senior Director for Teaching and Learning for EdTech Team. We're a California-based company, but we have subsidiaries in the UK and Mexico and Australia and Canada. And uh, tonight, we're going to be going over the new Google Sites. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share with you. Now I have with me moderating my colleague, Dominique Dines. Uh, she'll be taking a look at the Q&A and calling out any questions to me that we can talk about live, or I'll be in there at the end answering questions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share with you and bring up a presentation that I have set and ready to go, uh, just kind of talking about the new sites. So here's how I laid out our time together. The first 10 minutes will be just kind of going over the features of the new Google Sites. And I just want to make sure I'm screen sharing. I'm actually not sure. Dominique, if you would let me know, that would be great. Yes, yes you are. I am screen you. sharing. Okay. Yep. We'll bring that back up then. Sorry about that, guys. Um, OK, so our first 10 minutes together, we'll be looking at the features of Google Sites and kind of doing a little, this is what we could do in the old, this is what we could do in the new. And then in 15 minutes, maybe even a little less, we'll create a brand new Google site. I'm going to live demo that for you. And I'll stop in between each section and take Q&A. And then we'll have some time at the end as well. So first of all, it's very simple. You want to get to the classic Google Sites? Well, you go to sites.google.com like you always have done. They will be there. Your classic Google Sites will be there for 2017, and you can still edit them in classic Google Sites. By the beginning of 2018, Google has said that they will release a migration tool to take your sites from classic to the new Google Sites. You can find the new Google Sites at sites.google.com slash new. Everybody should have access at this point. It was rolled out to Gmail accounts and scheduled release domains just in the last couple of weeks. So here are what I call the big four. These were the changes that jumped out at me when I started as an early adopter using the new sites in June. First of all, they kind of live in Google Drive, and they take on your sharing settings of Google Drive. So you can have multiple editors in a Google site and on a Google Sites page editing synchronously. It's just like Docs. If you remember, the old the classic version of Google Sites, you had to break the lock on the site to give someone else a chance to edit a page. The second of the big four is that it renders so nicely for mobile devices. And I've got a screenshot to share with you. But it's just so much easier for you to preview. You don't have to go into incognito and look at it that way. The third, easily embed anything from another Google app. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I could do that in classic Google Sites. No, it's so much easier now. And then the fourth of the big four is huge. Easily move and resize objects. And when I do the live demo for you, you're going to see that there's no need to have a three-column page or a two-column page or create a table to align your images. Because the new Google Sites uses grid lines that you snap images and embeddable objects to. And it just works so nicely. So there's three main things that you can do in a Google Site. You can insert things. Uh, insert objects, images, upload things. Um, you can insert pages, and you can change your themes. So when we talk about insert, we talk about adding content, moving things around. Uh, the basic four are what you see in front of you, that text box, the images. But it goes on to all of the Google Drive apps, and then three other things that we can embed calendars, YouTube videos, and my maps. Uh, the next thing we want to talk is, let's go back a slide here, is pages. Okay, so from your pages option, you can rename pages, you can click and drag and move them to reorder, and you can what Google's referring to as nestle pages together. Now, 
In classic Google Sites, we could make subpage and then a subpage of a subpage and a subpage of a subpage. But at the current time, in the new Google Sites, you can only have a parent page and a child page. So only those two levels. I kind of predict that that will change over time, but that's just my prediction. You can also easily reassign your home page to one of the other pages that you've created. And then lastly, themes. Now, this is going to sound limiting to you, but when I think about how Google Sites is rolled out, I think about how Google Classroom is rolled out. You know, two years and a few months ago, Google released Google Classroom, and it had minimal function, but it, it, we loved it, right? And it's just They've improved based on user feedback, Google Classroom, so it's this robust learning management system now. Well, I see that with the new Google Sites. They released it with some limitations. They're accepting feedback, and then we'll see improvements to it over the next couple of years. So for your themes, you have six different themes to pick from, one of them being simple, you see on the screen, and then five colors that coordinate with their theme, that theme. So you have all of that to choose from. And then you can also choose your site header. Now, when the classic Google Sites released horizontal navigation, we were all so excited. But in the new Google Sites, you have two options. You can either choose top navigation, which you see on the top right-hand corner of your screen, or you see side navigation. It's one or the other. You can change your mind as many times as you want, and Google will automatically build that navigation structure for you. I mentioned adding pages. It's as simple as clicking that big circle in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen. You'll see that you can move those pages around, and when I do the live demo, you'll see me nestle the pages together. Moving objects around, as I mentioned, there's no issue with um, there's no issue with uh, inserting tables. You don't even have the option to insert a table. If you want your you want to do a flipped classroom type of web page here, so you put your your form on the left and you put your YouTube video on the right, or you click and drag and swap them around, and it's very simple. You don't have to worry about pixels of width or pixels of height because there's no way to edit the HTML. It's just click, drag, and drop. All right, so there's two different things going on. There's sharing your site and there's publishing your site. Sharing your site means that you are giving others the right to edit the site or view the site. Okay, so that would probably be your students. Maybe you're adding a student to monitor certain pages on your site, or maybe um, you want to have your co-teacher edit it with you. There is, just like in Google Drive, a Google Drive doc, there is only one owner on each new site. Then, in addition to that, you publish your site. Now, the new sites can now be published publicly, or you can keep it within that walled garden of just your domain. Uh, think about it this way. If you want parents and community members to be able to see your site, you must make that site public. All right, this is what I was talking about with previewing your site. It renders really nicely to mobile devices like smartphones. In the middle, we've got tablets, and then we've got laptops and desktops, and it'll give you an idea, and it'll render it so it fits just so nicely in the new sites. And uh, before we stop for questions, I want to let you know that um, I just spent an exorbitant amount of time building a 15-hour course on the new Google Sites. And if you're interested in it, Dominique, who's running the chat, will go ahead and put that site um, that web address up for you. So we're going to build a site, but before we build a site, let's go ahead and take some questions. So, Dominique, do we have any questions? Yes, we have a question from Kathleen. She says, if you edit in real time, what does a viewer experience? That's a great question, Kathleen. So when I show you how to publish our sample site that we're going to create, any changes that you've made don't um, show to someone who's a viewer on it until you actually publish. But if you're talking about your co-editor, you're going to see those changes live. Dominique, any other questions before we do the live demo? Because the live demo might answer some of these questions. Yeah, you showed the different devices. 
mm -hmm. of what the sites look like on the devices. And Tammy asked, some of my students were unable to view my site. What can I do to make it where they can all view on different devices? Okay, so that must have been something to do with publishing or their connectivity. It should be viewable on all devices. The only issue that Google Sites has, and some may see it as an issue, is it is only editable in Firefox and Chrome. So if you're using Safari or Internet Explorer, you can't actually edit the new sites there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our live demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and screen share again. And let's see here. So what I've asked you to do is go to uh, sites.google.com slash new. And that will take you here. And your screen might look a di little different than mine when you go back and you do this on your own. But uh, what, what I'd like to do, let's see here, uh, is start a site from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Create New Site button. And this is super simple. It's really just going to take us a few minutes. Of course, the first thing that I want to do is give us the site a name because I don't want untitled sites just like I don't want untitled forms and untitled docs and everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and call my site. Um, uh, Google, oops, I should spell it right, Google EDU on air sample site. And you're going to see that that only appears up here in the top left, so that now you can see that's the name of the site. It has nothing to do with your header, and it also has nothing to do with your URL. I'm going to go ahead over to the right, and I'm going to add some pages. So I'm going to click the Add Page button, and I'm going to add a math page and click Done. And notice that it's building the page for me. And I'm going to go ahead and add a science page, and I'm going to click Done. And then let's say I want to add a page for homework for my students. So I'm going to add a homework page, and I'm going to click Done. And I'll notice again it's building the page. And while I'm doing that, um, what I'm going to see is that there's six dots on each of these pages. And the six dots um, represent that that's a parent page. Notice the crosshatch. If I want homework to be a sub page under home, I have to click and drag it until I see that green circle with the white plus button in it. And now I can drop it there. And I want you to notice that the the six dots have turned into five dots. So now I have sub pages and I have my navigation already up here built. If I go to the right, the left hand side and click on the gear, I can change it to side navigation and now I have a nice pull out navigation. I can easily change it back to top navigation just by going back there again. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to click a theme. And the theme is difficult to see without a header. So I'm going to click header type. And you'll see right now I have title only, so very simple. I'm going to go ahead and click banner. And you'll see that it brought in a, a slight background for me. Well, I can go ahead and change my font to my theme to vision or impression or level if I want. And you'll see each of those has a little accent color that comes along with it. So, and on vision, you would see the same thing. You'll see the bar change as I choose the theme. But I know what you're wondering. You're wondering, well, what if I, you know, want a little bit of a custom banner here? Well, what I can do on my banner is click change image and they have a gallery of banners for me to pick from. You'll notice that some are tall and some are rather short, and we're gonna talk about why. Now, we could spend a bunch of time bringing in a custom um, image, which we could do through upload or by URL, grab something off your Google Drive or out of your ab albums, but because of our time constraints tonight, we're going to pick one of the prefab images here. So I'm going to go ahead with uh, this nice city background, and I'll click Select. And you'll see that it's changed. Now with header type here, I have three options. I can do that title only. I can go back to that banner. Or thinking about the image that I want to use, I might have a large banner with some more height to it. Okay, so 
this is my home page and probably on my home page I would put something like Lisa's lessons that could be the name of my website right and I'll notice here when I highlight it that I have the option of four different sizes you'll find this throughout the new Google sites that it's not by font size it's by normal text title heading and subheading you'll also see that I do not have an option to change the font and the reason is is because there are fonts associated with each of these themes so if I go into vision I'll see that there are three font styles bold modern and classic within vision and if I go back to Aristotle I'll see a different modern classic and bold so those are the options that I currently have let's talk about inserting You'll see uh, that we can insert a text box. That's simple enough. So I'm going, oops. So, so here is some text. Okay, same thing. I can highlight that text, bold, italic. Um, I can change that justification there and put it in the center, numbers and bullets, and I can change the size of that text. That's what I'm literally, that's what I'm limited to. But one of the beautiful things about the new Google Sites are these section styles, and it's based on the theme that you picked. So each section here has regular, emphasis, emphasis two, and you can pull in an image, and it's the same thing. So you can put together little blocks on your website and build it out. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can embed a URL. Well, actually, we'll hold that for later. You can embed an image. Now, when you bring in an image, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab an image right here from my drive. So, let's see. Uh, here we go. I've got an activity that I do with Google Sites, and I'm gonna go ahead and upload it. So this is a PNG, and it's the same thing. I can crop this PNG if I want to. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click check. I can move this PNG over. So you should be able to see my grid lines there. And let's say I want it over on the right. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and add a text box. And here are your directions. Okay, but I want this text box here. I want it right next to my PNG. So this is awesome because there's no word wrapping, there, there's nothing like that. And then I can take this section here, drag it up above, and really build out how my website's looking. And if I go back to the theme here and pick a different theme, I can pick different um, emphasis so that it looks a little better. Okay, so let's go to one of our other pages. I'm going to go to our math page and I'm going to go to insert. Now, of course, we can go into this header and we can do a banner behind there and we can pick a picture and change the image on our banner if we want. But we can also embed so many things from Google Drive. Like, for instance, a YouTube video. I can grab a video that I've actually uploaded to my Google Drive or I can search for a video on YouTube and embed it there. The other thing that I can do is I can grab a doc, a slide, a sheet, a form, or a chart. So I'm gonna go ahead into Google Drive and I'm going to get a Google Form here. So I'll grab this Google Form right here and click Insert. And then I can go ahead and drag this down so that the whole form is displaying on the page. So I can keep going and keep going okay the other thing that I can do that I've already talked about a little bit is I want this form next to that video so you'll see the grid lines there I can go ahead and put it all the way over the left and it adjusts to fit into that section you'll also see that this is in fact just one section now that I put the things together and I can go ahead into that background and get that emphasis if I would like Let's go to one last page. We're going to go to science. And this is one uh, option that I really like about the new Google Sites, that I can actually embed an entire folder. 
So if I go ahead and I look at the folders that I have stored on my Google Drive, and I get that folder called Google Sites Course, and I click Insert, it will embed all, well, you know what, we'll pick a different one that maybe shows up a little better. We'll get this one right here and insert it. And it should show all of the files in that Google Drive. I mean, this is nice. This is really nice. I can take make that take up the whole section. Now, in order for the viewer to be able to access these files, we'd have to make sure that the permissions on that folder were set to view with the link. All right, so we have a few more things that we need to talk about, but I think I'm going to stop for a moment and bring it back to uh, some questions. So I'll stop screen sharing. And Dominique, uh, do we have any questions? Yeah, we actually have quite a few, Lisa. A lot of the viewers are concerned about losing their old sites, and they're asking how to migrate yep. their site that they have to the new sites. That's a great question. So I mentioned at the very beginning, that Google is working on a migration tool. That tool will not be available until, I believe, 2018. So you can continue to work on your classic Google Sites in the classic Google Site Editor and wait for that migration tool. If you have a smaller website, so it's not a district website, it's a personal classroom teacher website that you've set up, you could just copy and paste your things over. But what you'll notice is those gadgets that you've gotten used to embedding on your classic Google site are not available in the new Google sites. And I'm not sure just how available they'll be. OK. Thanks. Another question. Another question. OK. A few, yep, a few people have asked, do you know if there will be tools for ADA programming or embedding code with the new Google sites? So from what I understand, the new Google sites is written in HTML5. And right now, there's no way to um, edit any HTML or any HTML5 in the new Google Sites. Um, I would imagine that down the line, just like we saw all of those improvements and changes in Google Classroom when it was launched, that we'll have more accessibility to the back end of our Google Sites. But Google hasn't said for sure that that's going to happen. OK, and then we have a question from Sarah, who says, in the current version of Sites, you can set page level permissions. That can is you not yet an option in the new Google site. So actually, let's go back to my sample site, and we're going to look at sharing, and we're going to look at publishing. So thanks for that uh, <laughs> segue there. <laughs> All right, and then we'll come back to questions again at the end. All right, so we're in our new Google site. And we've got three buttons up here. We've got the Preview button, the Add Editors, and Publish. I'm going to go ahead and preview it. And you'll see at the bottom right-hand corner that I can preview it what it will look like in a mobile device, what it'll look like on a tablet, and what it'll look like on a desktop. And I just love it. And for students working in the new Google Sites, it's super nice because it doesn't open an additional tab when you go to Preview. You just click the X in the bottom right-hand corner, and then you have access to editing again. The next button is the Add Editors button. And as I mentioned, the new Google Sites takes on the same sharing settings as Google Drive does in your organization. So if your organization does not share Google Documents, anything from Google Drive outside of your domain, then you will not have the option to share your new site out uh, out of your domain. I'm going to go ahead and click Change. And these are the five typical options that you have. Uh, you'll see that I can share it anyone in my domain with the link or anyone in my domain, and then public on the web. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel. And I want to come back here. So let's say I wanted to add Dominique as an editor on my site. And I don't expect her to go in right now. But just like with Google Drive, I can send her a message. And I can prevent Dominique from publishing the site, changing access to the site, or adding other editors. And I really, really love that feature. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Send. And Dominique will get an email from me and then delete the email. Uh, and then I want to click on Publish. Now with publishing, this is where the fun is, because this is where you're going to pick your URL. And I always recommend having your surname somewhere in your URL. So I'm going to do zoom in on air. I'm going to do anyone on the web. And then here's something to give a lot of thought to. 
Anyone on the web means that it's public and it might come up in a search engine for Yahoo or Google or whatever your search engine of choice is. Or I can, um, I'm sorry, this is anyone on the web with the link, or I can allow my site to appear in search results. Your website theoretically will not come up in search results unless you click that check. And then I'm going to go ahead and click pub publish. And my publish button in the top right hand corner is going to change. Now I have a drop down arrow where I can get back to my publish settings, where I can click my view publish site, or I could actually unpublish my site. Maybe you know, I put it up or I had a student put their site up and it just wasn't ready. So we unpublish it. And now if you go to that URL, it'll no longer be there. And if I keep click publish again, I could even change my URL, which is a really nice feature. Okay, so I'm going to stop screen sharing again and uh, come back to the Hangout. Sorry, I'm clicking through a few things here. And come back to the Hangout. We have four minutes to answer some more Q&A. Um, as I mentioned, and hopefully Dominique had a chance to put the link in uh, the Q&A, that we are offering a 15-hour course on the new Google Sites. And it's just you know much more intense. But we just built a site in, what, about 13 minutes? Dominique, any questions that you want me to answer to everyone? Yeah, uh, we have a few questions. One is asking, can you hide a page like you do in old sites? Uh, you cannot hide a page because it automatically goes into the navigation. So the navigation is not manually built. The navigation is built through the application. So at this point in time, you cannot hide a page. I know that's a feature request. And one of the things that I want to stress is that there's a submit feedback button everywhere throughout the new Google Sites. Look for it and submit your feedback because that's what the Google Apps team did with Classroom, right? They took all that feedback. They took the things that were requested the most by the public and implemented those features into Google classroom. So I highly recommend you ask for these things. Yeah, Another great question. suggestion. Another question about the navigation menu. Yes. It's from Hiroko and he's wondering, can you reorder navigation menu or is it tied to the order of your pages? It's tied to the order of the pages. So just like how you saw me nestle a page, um, you can click and drag and reorder the pages and that will automatically change your navigation. Awesome. And then one other question about, or from Melanie, she says, when I add a picture, it seems like the only, I can only add one column of text that is the height of the picture. How do I add two different types of text beside a picture? Oh, that's a great question. And I'll actually demonstrate that one for you since it's such a specific question and we are almost out of time. So hopefully you see my screen again. I'm going to go back to pages and I'll go to my homework page this time. I'm going to insert an image. So I'll go ahead and, and grab something from my laptop here. So I'll grab that image there. And then I'm going to add a text box. So you'll see that the text box comes in another section, right? So I'm going to go and type text, text, text. So I've got that text box. And now I can drag that and drop it here. But I believe what the person was asking was I want to add two, right? So I cannot add an additional thing here. But what I can add is pretty much a third column, a fourth column, or a fifth column. So if I type in sample, sample, and then I click and, whoops, and drag that box right next to it. So I can line things up. Uh, like this horizontally, but I cannot drag something underneath because remember that those grid lines are there. I hope that that answered the question. And I think we have time for just one more. Okay, there's a few other questions. Why don't we go with Matthew's asking um, if he can also insert a link to his calendar. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, so let's go ahead and add another section here. 
Um, there are three additional Google embeds, YouTube, Calendar, and Maps. So I can go ahead into my calendars, and it'll have to be one that I own or on a, or on a collaborator on. I'll go ahead and get Holidays in the United States and click Insert. Um, it's, it's great. Each gadget that we embed has its own settings, so I can decide that I want to do week view. I don't want the navigation buttons there. I don't want to show the title of the calendar and click done. And, you know, remember that I can just click and drag this wherever I want it. So if I want it in the center, it's centered. If I want an emphasis, it's an emphasis. If I want an image in the background, I've got an image in the background. Okay? Hope that answered the question, Dominique. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. A lot of people are saying thank you for a very um, well-organized and informative presentation. It's my pleasure. I hope that we'll see some of you in our Google Sites course, and um, I'll definitely go back and answer whatever I can in the Q&A. So thanks, everyone, for your time, and have a great evening. Thanks, Dominique.